Hello YouTube. So it's time to do another organic reaction. And this time we'll be dehydrating cyclohexanol to cyclohexene via an acid catalyst. Okay, so let's get started. To begin, you're going to need some cyclohexanol. I have about 70 milliliters here. Next, you're going to need some phosphoric acid. I'm using about 5 milliliters. You're also going to need a boiling flask to uh, run this reaction in. I'm using this pear shaped type. Okay, so you can start by taking your cyclohexanol and pouring it into your flask. Go ahead and note the aroma of cyclohexanol because cyclohexene smells nothing like it. They're like night and day. And that can come in useful later. You can also notice that this has a very high viscosity compared to other alcohols and even water. Okay, so now pour in your phosphoric acid. And then we're going to need to set up for a simple distillation. Okay, so it's boiling here. You will see a uh, product coming over at about 83 degrees C. Okay, so while we wait for this to distill, let's take a look at the mechanism for this reaction. Okay, on the left you can see our two reactants, cyclohexanol and phosphoric acid. In step one, the oxygen atom on the alcohol abstracts a proton from the phosphoric acid to form a protonated alcohol. This is shown by arrows A and B. Arrow A shows one of the lone pairs on the oxygen atom attacking a hydrogen on the phosphoric acid. Arrow B shows that the hydrogen atom left its electrons behind forming the dihydrogen phosphate ion, which is the conjugate base of phosphoric acid, shown in step 2. We can also see in step 2 the spontaneous loss of water. Arrow C shows us that the water took with it the electrons in the bond to form a neutral water molecule. I should also note that this is the rate determining step. Once the water has detached, we get our carbocation shown in step 3. Immediately the carbocation is attacked by the phosphate ion to abstract a hydrogen shown by arrow D. The hydrogen leaves its electrons behind to form the double bond shown by arrow E, and now you're done. We have our cyclohexene and we've regenerated our acid catalyst. Since cyclohexanol is a secondary alcohol, we will need heat to drive the reaction. However, the reason we are distilling instead of just refluxing has to do with the equilibrium of this reaction. Only a small amount of cyclohexene is formed at any moment before it reacts with water and reforms cyclohexanol. Since cyclohexene has a lower boiling point than cyclohexanol, the acid, or water, we can distill and remove it as it forms. This drives the reaction to the product side and will let us convert almost all the alcohol. So as you can see our distillation is done and we now need to make up a solution of bromine and dichloromethane to test if we really do have cyclohexene. If you do not wish to test your product then you can skip this step. You will need to put together a gas generator like this to generate the bromine. So in the flask are some pieces of potassium bromide. The flask is attached to a straight vacuum takeoff adapter which has a set funnel on top with concentrated sulfuric acid in it. Attached to the vacuum takeoff is a hose with a glass rod on the end placed in a graduated cylinder with however much dichloromethane you wish to add bromine to. Once you're set you can begin to add your acid in slowly. It will immediately start forming bromine gas and other very toxic gases. You don't want to breathe any of these gases coming out of this generator so be sure to do this outside or in a fume hood. So now we're fast forwarding through the reaction to show the dichloromethane changing from a clear liquid to a light red liquid. 
Once I felt I had enough, I stopped adding the acid and let it sit until no other gases were bubbling out. Now bromine is not the only gas dissolved in the liquid. It will also have some sulfur dioxide and maybe even a small amount of acid. I found that pouring the liquid would release the dissolved sulfur dioxide and some of the bromine, so please be very careful in handling. You only need a small amount of the solution you made to do the test. Mount it to a stand like this and then start adding in your cyclohexene dropwise, shaking occasionally. As the drops mix you will notice that the red liquid will start to go clear. This is because the double bond of the cyclohexene is reacting with the bromine and converting it to trans 1,2-dibromocyclohexane. Since cyclohexanol has no double bond, it will not react with the bromine. This reaction has its own name and mechanism, but I will save it for another video. So now that we are sure that we have cyclohexane, we can pour it into an ember bottle and store it in a cool place. I'll be using mine in a future video, so stay tuned. So thanks for watching, and please rate and comment. And if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe.